certainly for somebody like me this is a must-have and I'm really looking forward to seeing whether Hornby will be bringing out in their 2021 range complimentary coaches to go with these. Welcome back here to the loft on Weir Yard with me Jenny Kirk. It's really great to see you and today we've got a full review of the all new catering vehicles that Hornby have brought out as part of their Mark 1 coach range. Now these have come out in a variety of different liveries but I've been lucky enough to be able to source both versions of the Intercity Executive livery, one of my favourite liveries of all time and uh, I'm going to be taking a really good close look at these for you guys. In association with the channel sponsor Trainomatic, makers of DCC decoders and accessories. So come with me, really excited to show you these and we're going to be giving them the full once over and also comparing them to other Mark 1 vehicles that are available just to see how that paint scheme matches up. When the Hornby 2020 range was announced, one of the items that really did catch my eye was the all new RB RBR uh, catering car in the Mark 1 range. We're also supporting a smaller local retailer in the description box down below with a link to help you to find a source of these coaches if you really like what you see in today's video. That link is pointing to Arcadia Models in Shore. And they have a mail order service either via their website or over the phone if you wish to order by that method. And uh, this retailer doesn't actually know that I am uh, linking to them, but I'm sure that they will be more than pleased with your custom. Now we've had to wait until pretty much the end of the 2020 period. We're just literally at the time of filming uh, less than a week away from the Hornby 2021 announcements. But they did make it into the uh, release year that they were promised in. So the ones I've actually bought are the Intercity RBRs. Now I'll do, try and deal a little bit the difference between an RB and an RBR. But in model form, actually because an awful lot of the differences were internal, there's only a couple of things. I think there's a window where it's painted out up to the top drop light and possibly a difference to the end steps. But as I've got two RBRs, I've got nothing to compare these to. Now, way, way back, I think it was mainline models have first brought out the RB coach uh, in about 1980, 1981, if I cast my mind right back. And at the time, it was considered a really great model. Uh, but 40 years have gone by, and what we're faced with here is an all-new tooled model of these coaches. And I love the Intercity Executive livery. I've gone out of my way to try and collect every single Mark I that's been released in this livery. And I've got a pretty good rake, but it's always a, a, a treat to be able to add to that. So one of the things I'm going to be doing with these is comparing them to the models that I already have, particularly because I want to see do the colours match. Uh, but we're going to come on to that a little bit later in this review. These come in the standard Hornby boxes and uh, I'm not going to dwell on these. Uh, we've done enough reviews to know what uh, the Hornby coach boxes contain. Uh, but I'm just going to get this out, pretty standard packaging. One of the things that does strike me actually first up, uh, initial impressions, is how dark that roof is. And we do have some very prominent ribs. It's one of the things with the prototype Mark 1s is that actually these ribs weren't as prominent as you might think. And there's been a huge amount of debate as to how prominent they should be in model form. Now, in reality, uh, British Rail was very, very proud of the technique that they used to uh, weld these up. They were butt welded, so they were flat. There was a seam, 
but actually whilst you could see it, it wasn't massively prominent. And what we're seeing here is actually, I'm running my thumb over that, it is some very, very pronounced ridges for those ribs. But of course, when uh, Backman removed the ribs from their model, they kind of went all the way the other way and that created a lot of complaints as well. So I think you're damned if you do and damned if you don't. Uh, but certainly the Mark I coaches that are already on the market in the Intercity livery, uh, they all have the ribs. So I'm actually quite pleased that Hornby have released these with visible ribs because it means they're going to match up with the, the coaches that I already have. And I'm going to show you the catalogue numbers. I have got uh, R4974A Intercity Mark I Catering RBR Coach. Uh, number IC1653 and the other one that I've got here should have shown you these before I got the models out are 4974 BR Intercity Mark 1 Catering RBR Coach IC1667 so pretty much the same vehicle but two identities and I'll be honest with you um, I'm not quite sure as far as I can tell they've done uh, one for the maroon, they've done one for the blue-grey, I think there's one in the southern region green, and then there's two in Intercity, which does seem a little bit odd when you consider how difficult it is to get other Intercity executive liveried coaches in model form at the moment. But I'm wondering whether this is alluding to what we're going to see in the 2021 range, and I'd love to actually see a whole host of uh, Mark 1's come out in Intercity livery. I think it's crying out, and actually given that we've got both of these, it seems that if they don't announce those, and bear in mind I'm filming this uh, a few days before the announcements, uh, if they don't announce them, these seem a very peculiar release, um, doubly so given that they've got two identities for these. But I'm going to uh, turn this one over. We're going to look at them together. The roof is very dark, almost black. Um, that does match some of their other releases. I did do a review of the full brake in the breakdown train yellow with black chevrons, and that has a very dark roof. So these, I guess, match the other Hornby coaches in the range. And of course, as there always is online, there's always a massive debate over whether the colors are correct. And I've just been and had a look on uh, an internet for RM Web, and they can't decide amongst themselves on there what the correct color is. Now I'm going to just look over here and I've got, this is a Backman uh, restaurant buffet car. It's a different diagram as far as I can tell. In fact, it is a different diagram. So when we see there, what we've actually got is very, very different uh, design of coaches tooled up there. And this is really nice to see. I'm glad that Hornby is not going head to head with an, an already existing model. For me, this is great. They're bringing out a model of something that we've not had in any range tooled up to this kind of high standard before. So I'm really pleased to see these. But as you can see from the roofs, we've got a kind of a dark grey, but grey nonetheless. And this looks almost black to my eyes. You know, what we have to remember is that the coach roofs were quite dark, but we've said this before, what works in model form isn't necessarily 100% accurate to what the prototype had. My personal preference, it has to be said, is the very dark grey, um, but Again, I think I would suspect that Hornby are working from photographs which show the roofs being quite dark. And there would, of course, be some degree of variance between models that have been actually out in the sun uh, for a, an extended period of time and those which were uh, actually freshly outshopped. And this coach feels very much like a freshly outshopped coach in terms of the the vividness of the colours. Now I want to compare the actual uh, intercity livery here. Now the top dark grey does seem to be a pretty good match there. The red and white stripes, pretty good match. Uh, the red 
at the top, uh, just where the guttering is, it seems more vibrant on the Hornby model, but the photographs I've actually seen online do make it look very vibrant. And again, a coach that's just been outshopped in this livery might look a bit uh, shinier, as it were. The bottom cream band, though, looks slightly more yellowy on the Hornby model compared to the Backman one. But then again, would we really expect a Hornby to mix their paints to match up to a competitor's model. And I would argue no, um, especially if they're adamant that this is the correct shade. All I can say is that both of the Hornby coaches do match each other perfectly. And if we're gonna see a full range of Mark Ones coming in this livery from Hornby in the 2021 announcement, then I would expect them to match these pretty good. Looking inside these coaches, we've got fairly plain, uh, looks like one piece injection molded seating. The seating is in there, really nice to see. Uh, and I'm just looking for, I'm just seeing, can I actually get, no, there's no suggestion of the counter or anything in there, as far as I can tell. It's actually really difficult to see. It looks quite plain. Um, but there is a suggestion of uh, the inner workings. It's not highly detailed, but to be honest, it's not something that from most viewing angles you're going to see. The actual demarcation of the colours is really nice and sharp, and uh, it's got quite a pleasing look to it. Now, the white does just go over the bottom of the window surrounds, and looking at some photographs, uh, this seems accurate to some photographs and other coaches I've seen where it's like the window frame isn't painted in body colour. So again, you'll have to double check with a photograph of the actual prototype vehicle. And um, again, I'm pretty sure that Hornby have got this accurate to a particular period in time. I do like the lozenges on the window. They're really nicely done. They're printed, it seems, to the inside of the glass. So uh, they look really good. We don't get any raised weird effects from them. I, I really actually do like the fact that they've printed them to the inside. It makes them robust and it does make them look like stickers that have been put on from the inside, just like on the real coaches. We've got a frosting on, I think that's the toilet cubicle on the end. And that again, really nicely done. And it actually does bring out the top ventilator detail and the fact that we've got really nice flush glazing to these. The rest of the lettering is pretty crisp and sharp. The actual handles there, they're molded as far as I can tell to the body sides. And it's, it's one of the things that I'm actually, I quite like to see. I don't believe in detail for the sake of detail. It doesn't add anything to the model other than cost. So Tampo printing these uh, with the actual color to make them look like an actual handle, but without actually needing separate piece application of uh, like little metal handles. I think it's actually really, really clever. This is actually, I know Design Clever got a really bad name, but this is what Design Clever should be. On the end of the coach there, the black has got a little bit of a sheen to it. It's, it's almost a satin black. I think a little brush over with uh, some dull weathering, just to tone that down a little bit, would probably go some way just to mute that. But the lettering that we've got on there is really nicely done. So you can see there, uh, We've got the C1, a whole load of information about wheelbase and such like. This detail is moulded on and I am going to go back and I just want to compare that to the detail that we get on this is the Backman model. We get much less in the way of printing, but this is a model which is nearly 20 years old, it has to be remembered. And it does look a little bit coarser with some of that other molded on detail. There's no other rivet detail. Um, and it looks a little bit, uh, it's lacking in finesse. Let's bring that other coach back. See, this is molded on detail as well, but it just looks somewhat crisper, I have to say. 
but it really is exquisite to see the quality of that printing there which I can just about read. We've also got the overhead warning stripes and then we've got the representation of the door there that is in the shut position because as you're looking at it there's no coach connected up and of course when you do connect a coach up to it you're not going to see that. So we've got the accordion connectors there again a one piece plastic molding they look okay. The buffers are not sprung, they're a solid plastic uh, moulding, but they actually look all right. Turning to the underframe, we've got a wealth of detail here, and even down to these tanks in the middle, which from most viewing angles, you're never ever going to see, but it's really, really nicely done. Um, so there's a lot of separately applied detail. It is assembled nicely. And it really does look the part. You can see there all the way through. It's not just one solid piece with a kind of relief detail on. Uh, it's actually lots of separately done and applied boxes, wiring, trunking. We've got the uh, actual frame of the coach. It really is nicely done. The couplings don't have any kind of a self-centering mechanism, which on other coaches we have seen to aid closer coupling and uh, recentering on the curves but in terms of running qualities it does seem to run quite well so again this is possibly another area where the economy of not having to have all of that spring loaded um, gubbins in there plus its associated assembly cost I think is actually another good area. You know we can save money doing a lot of this and it doesn't detract on the model particularly the brake shoes, though, are miles away from the wheel treads. If we look there, it's just moulded as part of the side frames. Uh, that is ex exactly the same, actually, comparing again back to the Backman model. Uh, but it's something that possibly we could have moved on from. It is very obvious on these that those brake blocks are a long way from those wheel treads. The rest of these Commonwealth bogies, though, are pretty nicely realised, and it's something that um, I would say, overall, we're seeing an improvement over the now nearly 20-year-old Backman tooling, but it's just a shame about those brake blocks. Both sides of the coach are different, as per the prototype. And Hornby have got the correct window and door spacing for this particular diagram of coach. We've also got relief detail for the vents in the right place. It's a great addition to the Hornby range and certainly in this livery they were a must have for my collection. The other coach as well is pretty pretty much the same, the only difference is being the running number. I'm just looking there and seeing is the restaurant buffet in exactly the same place? It does appear to be, so effectively what we've got here is exactly the same coach, the only difference being that uh, printing of the running number being slightly different. And I'm, I'm going to have to ask at some point, I think, why two versions of this model, but I can't find a listing on any of the websites where I'm buying these from for a, a suffix uh, release of any of the other liveries. Um, it may be that they've sold out. Uh, that is a possibility. And the intercity livery on these is always going to be a bit more of a niche livery. But certainly for somebody like me, this is a must have. And I'm really looking forward to seeing whether Hornby will be bringing out in their 2021 range complementary coaches to go with these to enable me to finally expand my intercity rake. Couplings on these coaches, though, are slimline tension lock. They do fit into standard NEM pockets, even though we don't have that close coupling mechanism. The bogies themselves appear to be a clip fit to the underside, but that does not restrict their motion in any way. The wheels are metal disc wheels of the correct face profile, and really nice done. They appear to be chemically blackened and really do look the part. They're pretty free running too, and we've got that throughout the coach. Also in the packet, we have some user fittable items here, and these are the knuckle couplings, which you can add if you so wish. 
They go there just underneath the connectors and we've just got a slot as is in the chassis. To be honest with you, in normal running, you're never really going to see that. And in many respects, they look a bit odd because they're non-functional. So they don't actually connect up to the adjacent coach. So I tend to leave them off as absence doesn't draw attention to that fact. So I'm going to leave these in the box. To the scores. I really like the finish on these. The actual demarcation between the different colours is straight and true. They are completely parallel and it's quite a pleasing application of the different colours. And this does actually seem to match the photographs that I've found online. Even though there's been a lot of debate over the thickness of the red at the top, it does seem completely accurate to the photographs I have seen. The rest of the application correctly has some of these body side windows painted over as per the prototype. And I really do like these decals in the window as well. And I'm sure that under very, very close magnification, we'll actually be able to read them. The interior looks reasonable, although it doesn't really bear up to very, very close scrutiny. But from a distance, it really is a good indication of what should be on the inside of this coach. The lettering is straight and true as well, and really, really crisply done. The font is correct. We've got the numbering there, and what I really do like is the printing on the ends of the coach. Even though the detail doesn't look quite as crisp as I think it probably should be, this lettering more than makes up for that and gives a really good effect. The buffers are correct pattern, and actually I'm glad to see that they're not sprung. I think sprung buffers on rolling stock. It's only really of great value to a tiny minority of the uh, modeling community, but it adds an awful lot of extra cost for the rest of us. The ribs on the coach roof, I feel were perhaps a little bit too prominent, but this is an area that is very difficult to replicate in model form. They couldn't have done away with them entirely because that really does look a bit strange when you see that on some of the coaches from other manufacturers where they've chosen to go down that route. But I felt that the roof ribs were just ever so slightly too prominent and they could have done with being pared back a little bit just, you know, so that they were still there, but not quite as thick as these are. Another area of concern for me with these brake blocks, they're molded as part of the Commonwealth bogey side frames, and I can understand exactly why Hornby have chosen to do this. It probably does cut down quite a lot on the cost of assembly of these models, but it just seemed a little bit too in your face, as it were, because once you see that they are quite a distance away from the wheel treads, they do become quite noticeable from viewing angles. So all in all, I'm going to give this coach an 8.5 out of 10. When it comes to functionality, these coaches did run extremely well. They don't suffer from the infamous squeal that uh, some other manufacturers, Mark 1s, have a habit of uh, beginning to develop. I've not actually had any of the Hornby coaches in my collection become so afflicted. At first glance, you could become a little bit concerned at the lack of a uh, close coupling mechanism on the end of these bogies, but actually, I like this. It cuts down tremendously on assembly costs of this model, and that goes a long way towards keeping the price of these down. And certainly, they are the cheapest Mark 1s available brand new on the market. These metal wheels are very, very free running. And these bogies as well have no kind of restriction going from side to side. So all in all, these held the rails really, really well and just glided around. So I'm going to give these a 9.5 out of 10. Ease of use doesn't apply for rolling stock. However, aesthetics, I really like this livery application. I felt that uh, notwithstanding the fact that they're slightly yellower than the uh, Bankman models, I'm going to give this a pass on that. I am pretty certain that Hornby have done their research and that what we see here is accurate to the photographs and the prototypes that they've been working from. The actual quality of that paint application is really nicely done. And as you can see, those lines, there's no fuzziness between them at all. 
and they are straight and true. I really, really like this lettering on the end of the coach. It is so well done and actually adds quite a lot to the model. I also like, you can see there, the way the bands wrap around slightly, just like the prototype, and that is really nicely done. And for me, this all goes together to an livery application that is really good. So I'm going to give this a 9.9. .9. Value for money is another area where Hornby are scoring pretty well. I got these for £31.50, which does seem to be par for the course for the Hornby Mark 1s. But when you compare them to uh, comparable coaches on the market from other manufacturers, you're still looking at a decent sized saving. And if you're going to be putting together a rake of coaches, then that little saving on each of the coaches is going to quickly add up. Hornby have also listened to the modelling public, and they've started to bring out coaches in liveries such as this, the Intercity Executive Livery, which has been sadly lacking from various ranges for quite a few years, in fact over a decade, and it is pleasing to see that they are catering for this market. It also has to be said that whereas they could have gone head to head with another manufacturer, they've chosen to bring back to the market a diagram of coach that we've not really seen for 40 years in model form. And it really is a nice representation of this type. So I'm going to give this a 9 out of 10. That gives us a final tally of 36.9 out of 40, which is a really great score. And I'm so pleased that these have finally made it into 2020 just. And I really do look forward to see what releases Hornby is cooking up for us for the 2020 release schedule. As I said before, at the time of filming, this is a few days before the announcement, so I don't actually know what is coming forward. So do bear that in mind before you leave a comment down below after the range has been announced. And I do really appreciate hearing from you. So do please post a comment down below. Tell me about what you think about these coaches, whether you think they're great, whether you're disappointed. And also, do you have any of the other liveries as well? Tell me about those. But overall, I'm really pleased to add these to my collection. Well, I hope you really enjoyed today's video and don't forget as well, we've got a link in the description box down below and we're going to be supporting a smaller local retailer today and they don't know anything about this, but I'm going to be pointing you towards Arcadia Models in Shaw. They've got a website there where you can purchase any of the models that we've mentioned today and also a whole lot more besides. And if you give them a ring on the telephone number, he has uh, always a pretty good, very keenly priced second-hand table too. So uh, don't forget to support your local model shop. And we make nothing out of this. This is just purely a helping to support the small model shop. So do tell Tim that I sent you. And uh, don't forget as well to tickle that like button and share us on social media too. Sharing is caring and it really does help the channel grow. And if you haven't already done so, do consider subscribing to us and tickling the bell and you'll be the first to know about new videos as and when they go up. But this is me Jenny Coates saying you take great care of yourself, happy modelling and I'll see you next time. Bye for now. Today's video is sponsored by Trainomatic, makers of DCC decoders designed to be fully compatible with every manufacturer's locomotive. Visit train-o-matic.com to browse the full range and see what they've got suitable for you. I'd like to send out a huge thanks to everybody who supports me on Patreon. And an extra special huge thanks goes out to Anthony Kidson, Michael Churchwood, Anthony Hunt, William Wade, Wayne Johns, Offshore Allen, oorail.co.uk, Tepic, Michael Lockie, Helen Sink, Peter Bolton, Brian and Dorothy Mudd, Gary Lewis, David Quinn, Sparky 10707, George Butterini, Andy Finch, Chris Moss, Robert Sears, MD of San Juan Model Company and Grant Line Products, Sam Yates, Dale Williams, and Mo Henry. Thank you. Without you guys, I couldn't do this.